Hey, good people. This is the Confessions of a Nail Tech podcast. I'm your host, Rashida H. Muhammad, nail tech affectionately known as Ra. I have so much to share with you this evening. Welcome. Let's get started. Happy Tuesday, everybody. I'm excited if you can't tell by my voice because it is the month of March and I already told you that this year is going to be a magical year and March is just the beginning of said magical year. March is probably one of the luckiest months. Don't let anybody tell you differently. And I'm not saying it as a bias because my birthday is in May, but there's something about the month of March that suggests change and transformation for me. I don't know if you feel that way, but that is certainly how I feel. I feel like January and February, you're still shaking the funk off from that previous year. And March is really that reset button to start to live your life anew. And with that, I wanted to call this episode The Importance of Community because we're going to talk about a lot. And in the nail tech community, I don't know why I torture myself and Google nail tech and some of the most commonly asked questions here. Um, And it just made me want to come and talk to you all about the importance of community. And this This spans across all genders, all genres, all walks of life who decide to be nail technicians and get in on this $10 billion industry recent polls show. And I wanted to create this. Um, I was motivated because over the weekend, I um, got in contact with one of the instructors over at Empire Beauty in Buffalo, New York. So hello, Empire Beauty School. And, uh, and they were telling me that they were listening to my podcast with their students. And I said, my, my jaw dropped because, wow. And it just made me realize that what I do truly does make a difference. And I am so happy and honored to be a part of this community for so long. And to finally start to make the kind of reach and impact that I had hoped for when I originally started Confessions of a Nail Tech. So this is exciting. So we're going to take a quick break, pay a couple of bills, and then jump right into the importance of a community because you're going to need it along this journey. All right. I know this is the break right now, but I need you to do me a favor. Follow me on social media right now at Nails by Ra. That's Ra, R-A-H on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Also be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Nails by Ra. That's R-A-H. Also, if you have any questions, please email me with any nail tech related questions at nailsbyra at gmail.com. So first up, if you Google right now, we're going to do a quick exercise. If you can get to your phone or or, um, if you're near a laptop or, hey, if you're near a desktop, yeah, we're going to take it old school. Just Google nail tech. What's some of the first things that you see? Yeah, Jack Harlow song pops up. My nail tech, no, no, keep it a little secret. (laughs) I don't even know that's how it really go. But yeah, you see the nail tech salons or schools of beauty near your um, near your area, and then you see the Jack Harlow song, of course, nail tech. You know what? That might end up being my my ringtone. (laughs) But then you look at good old Google. And you see a bunch of questions, right? What is a nail tech called? Is it worth it to become a nail tech? How can a nail tech make a lot of money? What is the difference between a nail technician and a manicurist? And the wonderful thing about this is if you continue to click the arrows, you're gonna continue to get feedback. That's one of the great things I love about this search engine 
But as you click the arrows through, um, the questions become a little bit more detailed and sometimes random. So how long is nail tech school? What can a nail technician not do? And judging by some of these questions, some of these are asked by clients, not nail technicians. So the importance of having a community is to be able to answer questions just like that. And then some of the most random outrageous questions as well. And then to also have the support from day to day. And I share my nail tech origin story until I am blue in the face because it has made me who I am today, 10 years later. Ooh, I still can't believe that. I'm showing my age a little bit. I'm actually not that old, seasoned. Let me not say old. Um, I am... I'm, I'm marinating still. <laughs> so <laughs> I am a seasoned, you know, seasoned professional at this. But my origin is that um, if you can't tell, if you don't follow me on social media, clearly I am a black nail technician. And when you go into a nail salon, the first face that you see as the operator is not a black woman, not a black person, usually Vietnamese, Cambodian. Korean, sometimes Asian of some sort. And when it comes to other, because the the field is Asian dominated, that's no secret. When it comes to that, it's important to build a community within so that you feel supported along the way. Because unintentionally, there are biases that exist when it comes to people who are non-Asian doing nails, and that's correct for black, white, Hispanic, when you go into a nail salon. Historically, and I do a a wonderful episode of this in season one, historically, the nail salon is Asian-owned, right? And so when you come in and you see someone who looks like me or someone who is Hispanic or someone who is Caucasian operating the nail salon space, it makes you wonder. But you never know that person's story until you sit and ask or you sit and question or you just sit and have a conversation about their origins or how they got their start. And there is a beautiful sense of community amongst all nail technicians, regardless of gender, regardless of race, regardless of socioeconomic status that exists within this community that We all know it's hard. We all know that learning this craft takes some time. We all know that going to school to become certified only allows you to learn how to pass the state board exam properly. And we know that in order to continue to get better, you must practice. You must practice. There is not a book, not a podcast, not a not a video that is going to if you only did that one thing, have you completely secure in your ability to be able to do nails afterwards. So the importance of community is again to have that support and a mixture of seasoned nail technicians, new nail technicians, student nail technicians, and people from different backgrounds than you who all have one thing in common, which is nail technology to be able to get different perspectives and different understandings about it. And I shouted out Empire School of Beauty earlier because I enjoy hearing from you all. I enjoy hearing from all of my listeners and subscribers because that lets me know I'm doing something here. We're doing something here at the Confessions of a Nail Tech podcast. And it it has been such a pleasure to hear your stories, to hear that you're inspired by my stories and my experiences. And these are things that, hell, 10 years ago, I would have never thought I'd be sharing, <laughs> you know? So I say that to say that when you are a student in this part, this is gonna be maybe a two or three part point. When you are a student, yes, We want you to learn the theory. Yes, we want you to learn disinfectant proper, how to do all of the maintenance and management. Absolutely. But we also want you to find mentorship and continually be a learner. Be agile in your methods. And agility means just being able to adapt, being able to take in and soak up information because there are so many ways and so many different things that you could do once you are a licensed professional in the discipline of nail technology. Did you know that? So I learned this shortly after 
Um, you could become a medical nail technician where you work under a podiatrist. You could become a traveling nail technician, just like a traveling nurse. And as long as you're working within the state's guidelines of cosmetology, you can operate. And the importance of a community is to find people like that. Find people who have experience so that you have an idea of what you're getting into. So students, keep up the awesome work and continue to learn and grow because you never stop learning and growing. Trust me, I'm, you know, I'm still learning and growing myself. My second point is for seasoned nail technicians, nail technicians who have been in this game for some time and have been here to see so many trends come and go and research. Continue to build that community and also reach back and give back to the community that made you great. This goes outside of nail technology too, but for the sake of conversation, we'll reference just nail technology. Reach back. If you can remember the school that you had attended or the program that you attended to become certified, try and reach back and pour into these students who are eager to learn the art of nail technology. That became one of my missions clearly after speaking with a couple of beauty schools and beauty professionals. And honestly, this calling came when I was working in the salon and I was uh, working on a certain instructor. And little did I know, she had came in there to screen the owner and also screen the nail technicians because she had been looking for an opportunity to develop a partnership for her students, you know? And without getting too much into it, um, she decided that, you know, she wanted me to come out and help or we could stay in contact so that I could come out and speak to the students at the school. But given the rules at the salon I worked at, you know, that wasn't permitted. However, if given that opportunity again, I knew I'd take advantage of it because I love pouring into eager minds wanting to know nail technology and even just the practice, you know. And I remember sitting with her and she was a a master cosmetologist and she picked up on everything, the environment, the atmosphere, how she was greeted or lack of greeting when she walked into the salon. And then I was able to turn that entire situation around in her favor. So that way she enjoyed her service and she opened up to me about her, um, what she did. And that's one of the great things about enjoying what you do and then being of service to your clients. Because never think that you're too large or too much or too something to humble yourself and get the perspective of a client because you never know who you're talking to when these clients come in. You truly do not. And uh, don't let that be the reason why you're always nice. But Keep that in the back of your mind. You never know who you're talking to. You never know who this person knows. You never know what they're secretly doing when they come in to see you in the salon. But it was in that moment that I realized it was important to continue to develop relationships with nail technology schools and or instructors so that then you could, I could rather, come in and share my experience and also allow for students to come in and get real world experience in a high traffic salon. And I say that because when you're in nail tech school and perhaps things have changed, and again, I am not above correction. So if I misquote anything, please feel free to correct me in my inbox and say, hey, Ra, actually nowadays we do X, Y, and Z. But when I was in nail school, we had uh, we had lab hours, which were discounted services for people who would come in and get their manicures, pedicures, acrylics done by uh, by students at a discounted price. I know some places still do it, but I was imagining um, still having those lab hours, but also offering field experience where nail technicians are allowed to come out and be an apprentice under a licensed nail technician who has her salon, his or her salon, and learn the ropes One of the advantages that certain cultures have who dominate the nail tech industry is that even though 
the students have to go and still go through all of the certifications, passing the written and passing the practical state board examination, they also get to go home to their family salon and get field practice. So keep that in mind too. That was something I thought about a lot when I was actually in school. And one of the things that was in the back of my mind, but I didn't let it stop me from being great, was that no, I didn't look like any of the nail technicians from my neighborhood. I grew up on the east side of Buffalo. There was Sammy's and Flower. And <laughs> I know if you're listening from Buffalo right now, you're like, yep, yep, I went there. Hey, Chris. <laughs> there was Sammy's and Flower and City Nail across the street or Rose Nail across the street from Sammy's. I don't even know if they're still there. And if you went into all of those, they were all related. Uh, Sammy's and Flower, Sammy and Fla- uh, Christian and Flower are sisters. So on Bailey Avenue, there are three nail salons in that little strip. So, yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> you from Buffalo, you already like, yep, yeah, she from Buffalo. She knows what she's talking about. <laughs> yes. And again, that was always in the back of my mind because in my neighborhood, you didn't see too many nail technicians that look like me. Um, a little backstory if you are new to the program. Um, I fortunately did grow up with one nail technician who did look like me. Her name was Miss Debbie, and she lived on my street and turned her sunroom into her purse into her um, nail salon. And and she, I remember, and that was enough courage for me to go forward and do this. And that's what I mean by it's important to find community within the things that you want to do, whether it's nail technology or whatever you decide to do after you're licensed. Um, the importance of community is so that way you will always know that. You are capable and more than capable of accomplishing those kinds of those kinds of skills and accomplishments, you know? So we're gonna take a quick break. I'm gonna grab some tea because oh, <laughs> I shared a lot and I hope you got something. Again, shout out to Empire Beauty School. Hey, thank you for reaching out. All right. you're probably asking, well, how do I find my community? It seems quite simple enough. It will naturally happen for you, especially if you are, I may answer this in a two part series as well. So the first part is as a student, if you are a student, your best bet at building your community is right in your classroom. Look to your peers for community. Look to who your peers look up to in the community and go from there. When I was a student, um, my peers and I actually got along very well. Um, My goodness. We all went to Erie Wimbosis together and sometimes we hang out outside of Erie Wimbosis. And... um, during that time and then our schedule was afternoon was evenings really so 6 p.m until 9 or 10 p.m because we had four hours three times a week and we were there until late and um we got along very well and often there would be times where you know, we would exchange information or find nail tutorials or find other products that we just naturally liked. And again, this is back in 2000, 2011, 2012. So things were a little different. We didn't have all of this social media and access to all of this. We maybe had YouTube, but there weren't too many people on YouTube doing nail technology tutorials. Maybe, not even a tutorial. It was probably music and pictures. (laughs) Okay, YouTube was a very different place 10 years ago. And um, we would, again, practice on each other and naturally open up 
share our fears about the state board exam, share when we were taking the state board exam. And the way that our program ran was when you completed 250 hours, that's when you would you would get your certification. So many of us finished at different times. Um, we, where there was a deadline by the time you had to finish those 250 credit hours in order to get the next class in. But um we did a lot of us finished at different points in June of that following year and um of course we kept in contact about taking the state board exam when we we're going to sit for it and when we we're going to sit for the practical I can't say about the other women who were in the class but for me I hurried up and did a lot of those things. I didn't want my certificate to expire because you do have a year from when you finish your credit hours to take the state board exam, the written and the practical. Um, I'm not sure if those things have changed now with all of the changes that have happened in New York State. However, uh, I remember sharing and I actually remember my last day of class. Um, I remember the first girl to finish and how excited she was. And I kind of choked up a little bit because, you know, that was my friend. We shared a little, um, our desk sat next to each other, our nail tech desk sat next to each other. So when she was finished, she was done. She was free to go and get that field exposure if she wanted or sit for the state board whenever she got her information. And so a couple of weeks later, I finished. And it was kind of a bittersweet moment too, because I knew that, life would be different after that it would and i'm not saying that to scare you but it's just the realization that try to build community everywhere that you go um so after i finished as a student again still keeping in contact and trying to get cued into things happening at this um the nail specialty school uh i went at a time of transition. So I'm not even certain if the nail specialty program even exists anymore at the Erie Wimbosis Harkness Workforce Center. Um, but being able to experience all of that and then still have it within me to continue to seek out community was extremely helpful in my development. And that led me to my first job in a nail salon. Um, social media really was a um, important part in my development and how I found community. So the way that we have Instagram, we use all of these things. Social media is a tool. I say that a lot and I mean it. Social media is a tool. My first official job as a nail technician came from an Instagram post from the nailery. That was my first full-time job in the nail salon. And I, well, the nailery was in Buffalo, New York. And um, it came from that. It came from just being on social media, scrolling. And this came after I had already, you know, I, I hit the pavement and I tried to go into certain salons and see if they were hiring any nail technicians. And I cut my teeth. Um, sometimes it was discouraging walking in at face value People are looking at me like, well, who, do you work for the state board? Are you trying to go undercover? There was a lot of skepticism. And Tia took a chance on me at the nailery. So um, that was my first job. And uh, as a student, so this, again, I'm still, I know I get long-winded sometimes, but I'm passionate about this because I don't want, I know that this still exists. Even though um, we are starting to get into a more inclusive uh, world, it's still certain biases exist when it comes to the nail salon. And I want students to understand that you just have to have really tough skin. You do in order to get your foot in the door. Not everyone is cracked up to be an entrepreneur. And that's just the honest truth. Not everyone's going to be an entrepreneur. Sometimes you're going to just be a nail technician in someone else's salon, and that's okay too. There are You can still make really good money being a nail technician in a salon, and you have to have tough skin. You really do. You have to want what you want out of that salon more than anyone's criticism, more than anyone's doubt of your abilities, more than anyone's own personal bias about what it is that you can do. So take that and remember that you just need to have tough skin 
and continue to seek out community. So um, when I first started working in the salon, um, the other a nail tech, there was myself, the owner, and two other nail tech, well, three other nail technicians at the time. Um, one was per diem. She owns her own nail salon now too. Uh, shout out to Dazzling Beauty. Dominique is cool. She's in Buffalo. And um, there was Chanta and Fat and Tia. So technically five of us in the salon at any given time, especially on the busier days, but full time Monday through Saturday, that was myself, Tia, Shanta, and Fat. And we became like a little family because, again, we're with each other from 9 a.m. until 7 p.m., Monday through Saturday. So you can't help but be up in each other's business and, you know, (laughs) build community in that way. And then who they know. Um, That honestly was my foot in the door and helped to change the the narrative of what a nail technician looks like and how well of a service that you're going to get regardless of skin color or ethnicity. You're coming to get your nails done and as long as the person is licensed and abiding by all the rules, you're going to get a really good service. And um, again, I'm still talking to the students, so <laughs> I want you to really get this and hold on to it because I, trust me, I have been there. When you finished, you're you're all excited, you're certified, uh, and then wow, you're licensed, and then okay, now I have to find a job. Don't give up. Make sure that you're going in and you're doing the work. Let your work speak for you. And if you need practice, find a family member, practice on yourself, get the, um, the, the, the hand to practice on so that you are used to hand mechanics or, you know, get the, um, the, the, the prop nails too, so that you can paint or dip or use a practice, the acrylic on the nail so that you have a technique down. And again, any salon owner, as long as you are licensed and you have potential, you'll get the job. That's how I got my first job. But listen, my first full set, oh my gosh. <laughs> my first professional full set, baby. <laughs> my first professional full set was, uh, yeah. looking back on it, I can laugh. But when it happened, I was sweating, literally sweating. And my hands were shaking. I was taking so long. And you just really have to get through that part. You have to, you have to cut your teeth. Nothing is going to be easy. And if it is, wonderful. That's great for you. But the realistic part is you're still learning your craft. You're still learning the products. You're still learning the, the, you know, the culture of that salon, meaning the culture salon space, not the culture of the people who own it, but the culture of that salon. How are the clients? What's the relationship like with the clients and the owner and the cl- and the nail technicians? So Again, it's good to to first practice your skill and know yourself in order to reach out and have that community. Okay, so that that piece was for my students. We're going to take a break. I'm going to have a couple more sips of my tea and then we're going to get into continuing to build community once you are a seasoned, seasoned licensed professional. Hey, good people, this is the part of the episode where we give you the hugest, biggest, most gracious shout out because without you, there is no Confessions of a Nail Tech podcast. And I am just so appreciative of all my subscribers. Welcome to the village, underscore Mia underscore D. Hello there. Welcome to the village PB School of Nails here in South Carolina. Welcome to the village Gray Matter Realty. Welcome to the village Nails by Katie Edwards. Hello there. Welcome to the village Tiffany underscore Wallace. Welcome beauty by Jamie Hove. Hello there. Welcome to the village beauty of life wellness. Thank you for subscribing to the confessions of a nail tech podcast and finding me on Instagram at nails by raw. I truly do appreciate you and Empire School of Beauty of Buffalo, New York. Shout out to you and your amazing advisor, instructor, hair nerds. This is who reached out to me and let me know that she and her students listen to the Confessions of a Podcast Nail Technician. So shout out to all of the students at Empire Beauty School 
uh, Buffalo, New York. Classes Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. until 5 p.m. I am so happy that you all found me. Welcome to the village, y'all. And thank you for finding us on Nails by Ra on Instagram. Shout out to Eternal Beauty underscore X. Welcome to the village, y'all, and I appreciate you. Continue to share your magic as I continue to pour into you. Thank you so much for tuning in. So how do I find community as a licensed professional? Well, you know, I'm still finding community, to be quite honest with you. When I moved to Atlanta, I had a similar experience with working in a nail salon. And uh, for a, a time, my community had been the nail technicians and the owner of the salon of where I worked. And of course, my community grew from the clients that I met, some of whom I still keep in contact with. And then um, I also looked within myself to um, create a community. So that is really what birthed the Confessions of a Nail Tech podcast, my blog, and um, my increased um presence on Nails by Ra on Instagram. Um, Back in the day, had this been, you know, nine or 10 years ago, that same page was Pinky Promise Buffalo, New York. And that was my mobile nail salon um, some years ago. And, you know, after reorg and redeveloping my brand and what I wanted to do, I realized that I have become a nomad. (laughs) <laughs> here I am. I started in New York, then I moved to Georgia, and now I'm here in the Carolinas. And I wanted to create a community that would follow me no matter where I went, no matter how far I moved, no matter where I was, I could always reach out and or um, post or create episodes for you to, to laugh with me, cry with me, and do all of these things um, and keep it in relation to nail technology. You know, I don't really get into politics on this podcast. I don't really get into too much that is super heavy because, you know, the world is a creepy place as it is. And this podcast is not supposed to be that. And so I created a space. I created a space for me. And I uh, fortunately was able to create my community, you know, Each episode, I give everyone their shine by shouting you out for subscribing and interacting with me because I truly do appreciate it. And, um, you know, that's one avenue to take as a creator. You know, we are in a creator market, but then also as a licensed professional, being able to give back and share your experiences and uh, create a safe space or a space for other nail technicians to come in and thrive or come and share their stories or just come in and kick it and laugh and cry with you sometime because you need it. Um, I guess I am that strong friend. So um, I have no problem with that. And again, I had to look within myself to create that community. And um, here in the Carolinas, I found community. Um, And that's just naturally my personality going out and doing some research on the nail salons in the area, uh, the traffic, what the traffic is like for these nail salons on any given day. I think since I've been here, which will almost be a year and it, it went by super fast, but I've been able to see what the salons look like on Monday through Friday and then Saturday because most salons here are closed on Sundays, which is a blessing. <laughs> and so um, just to get an idea for the kind of market that I, I may become a part of, I know I, I kind of talked about opening my own salon at one point. And um, right now it takes a lot of research just to get an idea of the kind of market that you're getting ready to get into and the kind of clientele in the area. Um, so, you know, your, your Fort Mill area, your Ballantyne area, South, South Charlotte, Northern South Carolina. So areas that um, are considered the metropolitan Charlotte area and getting an idea for it because South Carolina 
is still very rural. South Carolina is super rural. And that's no secret. Um, I love it. It's beautiful. But it create it poses a challenge for what I want to do. Uh, and while I understand that a community here exists already, I love to be a part of it and create my own space. And that's there's a lot of power in that. And even as a, a student, you can create your own space. You can create those things that are special to you and you will naturally attract people who find those things special too. All right. So with that nugget, we're going to get out of here. I know I've talked your ear off, but I wanted to really stress the importance of building a community, a strong nail tech community, because we're going to need it as this as this industry continues to grow and build, we're going to have to have a strong network of nail technicians with different levels of experience and expertise and different know-hows, different knowledge about certain things. Um, when it came to transferring my license, I I didn't go to YouTube to learn how to do it. I figured it out on my own, a lot of trial and error, and documented it, and documented it along the way and made sure to share about it. The same with um, transitioning again from Georgia to South Carolina. That video is coming because I'm still currently going through the motions of that. It was a headache, trust me. But I do it and I, I share my experiences so that you're prepared and or you don't have to deal with some of the challenges that I did because that that wall has been broken down already by nail technicians like myself who challenge those things and or go through it and can give you detail because sometimes the state board of cosmetology websites are very vague so i do a lot of these things so that you don't have to so with that we're gonna get out of here thank you for listening this has been the confessions of a nail tech podcast episode 10 the importance of a community until next time ciao Thank you for tuning in to the Confessions of a Nail Tech podcast. I've been your host, Rashida H. Muhammad, MBA, Nail Tech affectionately known as Ra. Thank you so much. We have so much to share next Tuesday at our new time. Tuesday morning, check us out on any platform that you use to listen to your podcast. Until next time, ciao.